Hello all, welcome to today's video. Today we'll be mainly discussing about a very important topic in programming, which is called how to detect heap memory corruption in your application. For this is pretty useful or pretty important, uh, must know uh, thing for a developer who is working on a particular application. For most of the scenario, most of the time, what happens is when we work on a particular application, uh, an application will run smoothly, and after some point in time, it might crash due to some or the other reason and it, it is pretty difficult to figure out what is exactly causing that particular crash so in those scenarios to debug those scenarios most probably if there is no valid reason or exception message which is thrown during that exception most probably the reason for the exception might be a heap memory corruption so it is pretty difficult in a live application or in a uh, big application to detect or uh, detect a heap memory corruption which is happening Therefore, uh, we will now discuss uh, the tools which are required to actually debug a particular heap memory corruption which is happening with a live demo. So before starting, I would like to discuss uh, what is heap memory corruption. Therefore, most of you might be familiar with what is heap memory and how it is used in a particular application. Therefore, this uh, heap memory corruption will occur any time when you try to access an invalid memory location in a heap. If, by invalid memory location, I mean if you are accessing a memory location which is already freed and you are trying to access it again, then it is an invalid memory access. And sim similarly, if you are trying to access a memory which is outside the bounds of that particular allocation, then that also raises an invalid memory exception. Therefore, heap memory corruption, it results in. So how to understand or how to debug the heap memory corruption that is particularly challenging to a developer therefore we will try to see with an example how we can debug a heap memory corruption and try to pinpoint the exact location at which the heap memory uh, corruption occurs therefore for that demo purpose i have actually created an atl project which supports com and i tried to actually simulate a heap memory corruption with a simple code using a bstrt uh, if you are not familiar with bstrt and com you can just uh, simply think of BSTRT as a string type, a plain string type. And I am actually trying to uh, create a client or a BSTRT object client with the initial value of that string as my client. And I'm calling an execute API on this class and passing in this particular BSTRT object. And once we are receiving the BSTRT object in the execute function, what I'm trying to do is I am creating an, another instance of BSTRT object and i am trying to latch on to the bstrt object which is getting passed onto this execute function and i am calling uh, uh, means i am passing false to this particular bstrt constructor so what happens is it will not try to allocate a new memory allocation for this uh, bstrt object instead it tries to latch on to the existing bstrt object memory location it will try to point to the same memory location which is getting passed here what happens is once we try to uh, once this particular scope ends this is acting as a smart, smart pointer bstrt object is essentially you can consider as an equivalent of a smart pointer uh, to manage memory effectively therefore bstrt object once it goes out of scope it tries to deallocate the memory location pointed to by this particular bstrt object which is nothing but the client and once that is successful it comes back here and once this particular main application ends this also will try to free the memory location because the client is created here. So you can see that in theory, there is a double free which is happening here. Once inside this execute function and once the main function ends, there is a two time free which is happening. So this will in turn cause a heap memory corruption. Therefore, how we, with the help of the utilities, how we can actually pinpoint that this is the exact location at which the heap memory corruption is happening. We will see that. So for that, you need actually two tools. I'm There are many other tools available there for this two tools. I find it pretty effective in detecting a heap memory corruption in unman, un, unmanaged code. Therefore, the I came across one blog which uh, actually is pretty interesting and it is pretty in detail. It explained how to actually debug a heap memory uh, corruption. Therefore, the, they have actually mentioned two main applications. One is the app verifier and one is the debug dia. So we have to download these two applications, application verifier and debug dia, dia utility. Uh, 
uh, therefore these are the two tools which actually works in conjunction which in works in pairs to actually give us the information required information where the heap memory is getting corrupted therefore how these tools function we have to it, it is not only important that we detect a heap memory corruption with some tools we, we must also understand how these tools function how these tools are able to detect a heap memory corruption so it is nothing how these tools work is they actually allocate what is called as a page heap therefore what is a page heap therefore page heap is nothing but a process in which every heap allocation which is happening in our application for every heap allocation there is a reserve memory which is allocated in the heap which enables these debug utilities to monitor attempts uh, attempts at accessing an invalid memory therefore this page heap the process of page heap helps these debug utilities like app verifier to detect an invalid heap memory allocation or uh, invalid uh, memory access in the heap therefore this uh, this app verifier once we this is the, i already downloaded the necessary utilities if i just show you the app verifier which is there for app verifier is nothing but it comes with the windows sdk uh, by default if you are downloaded if you are installed visual studio you might have also installed windows 10 sdk it comes along with the windows 10 sdk so if it is not there you can download it separately i will just uh, add all the links necessary links in the description box below to check out the description box therefore app verifier as you can see you have to actually latch on or observe a particular process so i have actually selected my process that heap corruption dot see the output file is generated by this uh, project and i actually enable what all tests that it needs to run therefore i enable the heap test and memory test actually only heap is required for this use case i enable the memory also and once it is done we have to actually uh, set up the properties we have to actually uh, set up the verifier stop options for this particular thing so i have already uh, set up for the heap for verifier stop option is nothing but at which point uh, this app verifier should trigger a breakpoint or should trigger a signal so that the other utility should catch it for app verifier we can specify at which point the uh, app app verifier should trigger a signal therefore it should trigger a signal on these all memory exception cores or whenever these all memory cores happen what we what we are doing is we are setting the severity of these things as error and we are doing an error reporting app verifier we will do app verifier will do an error reporting that is it logs to a file and it logs the stack trace also at which point this particular exceptions are occurring and we have to set a breakpoint exception the exception is of type breakpoint and miscellaneous uh, means not continuable you have to set this is pretty important you have to set a breakpoint uh, error reporting here and once you set it up then the app verifier setup is done then the next task is to open the debug diag utility and set a crash rule so when a crash should occur and when a dump should get generated therefore that rule you have to set in the debug diag diagnostic utility you have to add a rule i have already added one of the rule therefore we can try to see if, if i am able to open it yeah therefore this is a crash rule which i have set and uh, what what is the type of uh, uh, crash rule i have set i have set that uh, to generate a full user dump on crash on uh, on exception trace and in the exception tab this is the main thing that you have to set you have to set the breakpoint exception type exception code you have to enter uh, you have to do this add exception and it is already will be there and in the action type you have to select this full user dump and once it is done uh, this particular action will be created and you have to do save and close for this app verifier you have observed that we have set the breakpoint exception therefore since we have set in the advanced advanced settings this exception as breakpoint exception once this breakpoint exception is encountered what action this will take we have set the action type as full user dump therefore it will try to generate a full user dump uh, when the particular breakpoint exception is thrown therefore that's what the uh, role of this debug diagnostic tool it essentially generates the dump for you so once it is done once all settings are done you are all set up to uh, do the uh, to run your application and you can wait for the dump creation to happen i have set the user dump path as uh, this particular path so let's try to run the i'll just show you the path currently this path is empty so i will try to uh, run the application to see what happens yeah 
where it's building it since I have changed the file. Uh, so it generates that exe and it will try to execute that exe. Uh, there is a okay, I have to actually launch with an uh, elevated permission. So I'll just close this particular application as of now and I will try to launch a Visual Studio with an elevated permission as administrator. Yes. <clears throat> Yeah, I will try to run our application. Yeah, it succeeded. And there is no prompt or command window came. I guess something ran, uh, the application ran, but it didn't execute properly or some crash, hidden crash happened, which is not, you You are not able to see the crash window. Uh, nothing Nothing is coming up due because of this exception, because of this heap memory corruption. So that is a challenging part in this, uh, to debug the heap memory corruption. No visual prompt or entity prompt comes up. So if you go to this path, you can see the there are dumps which are get which got generated. So let's try to open this particular dump using WinDBG. There, I will try to open this particular dump. This breakpoint exception dump. I will try to open it up. So before that, you have to. Uh, I hope you are familiar with using WinDBG. If not, you, it, it is pretty simple to use. You have to go to the settings and the debugging settings, you have to set up the source path and the symbol path from which to fetch the symbols. Once it is done, you click on OK. And I have loaded the dump file. And as you can see, I can see in the call stack, some call stack is showing at the point where this breakpoint exception is thrown. As you can see, you can see our module. From our module, it is calling this BSTRT and double colon free it is calling a free api of bsdrt object uh, that is fine it is expected but if you see it is already called this bsdr free and again it is trying to call uh, uh, free therefore we will try to double click on this particular thing you will be able to see the uh, source code of it since you have already specified the uh, uh, the source file path let's try to go here where the destructor is happening and we are able to see the Scalar destructing destructor. Let's try to see where this is going. Let's try to jump, try to see if we are able to point it to our main code. Yeah. As you can see, it is coming from this particular path. So after the execution of the main program, free is getting called and it is trying to free an invalid memory location. So from the call stack, it is pretty clear. If at which point it occurs, it occurs after the execution of our main application, as we have explained, as I've explained it before uh, the demo. So this is the exact point at which that heap memory corruption happens due to the double free which is happening double free of the bstrd object so, uh, yeah that's what i wanted to cover in this particular video i hope this is this you found it pretty helpful if you found it helpful please do share it with your colleagues and colleague developers who find, found it find it difficult to debug the heap memory corruption and do share it in your in your peer groups and do like and subscribe this particular channel for more such videos like this. Uh, thank you. Thank you for joining.